This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hey, everyone. How's it going? All righty. After our uh, exceedingly long last video. <laughs> Which people seem to love, so... You know, do, do you think we, so? We haven't had anything. Yeah, we, we haven't had any, anyone say, oh, it was too long. They said they did like the chapters, though, Chris. Uh, so. Yeah, I hate making chapters, but I had to for that one. <laughs> yeah, and it was really it was really good. So, yes. Um, All right. All right. I'll let it go. Um, <laughs> that was that was a uh, it was a mouthful to get through for sure. Um, truth mm, be told, we should have broken it up into two podcasts. But <laughs> no. No, go long, go long, go hard. Good one. So if you've uh, if you follow Jared's Instagram page, you'll know that he's um, been slapping paint on a cabinet, uh, a mm. well planked cabinet, by the way. Oh, it's it's more planked than the planks on a boat. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm out of curiosity because Jared Jared's he's winging it. He's he's creating his own uh, uh, templates there to do the do the painting based off of uh, some photos and such. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'm just freehanding it. Yeah, freehanding it. So I'm curious, why not slap Bondo on and or wood filler and fill the planking and then sand it and paint over? Uh, because the 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 thing about these cabinets is the the planking and also the um, the gouged cabinet that has been made by the good folk in Africa, the kids <laughs> in Africa, um, where this machine was originally located. Um, kind of speaks to the patina of the machine so it has a history to it and um planking is one thing but um i actually think let it ride um you know this isn't a a full butter cabinet restoration this is me making the art more prominent on it but still keeping the original history of the cabinet in place um and i think uh yeah i think i decided made the decision a while ago to go no i'm just going to I'm going to leave the gouges on because it speaks to a story of the cabinet. Um, but still, you know, touch up the art, make it a bit more vibrant, basically. All right. And I know that's like some some people will be going, oh, why don't you bond it? And I said also because I couldn't really be bothered. <laughs> and also the thing is, is the other thing is too, like, like you could bond it, but the thing is that it's like literally one ply deep. So oh, okay. like that, that top layer, because it's like seven ply wood up there. Yeah. So there's one sheet of ply that's got the planking in it. So like, that's actually not that easy to restore because it's thin. So you can just leave it alone, you know. <laughs> um, Fair enough. And yeah, just touch it up. And you know, the thing is that people aren't really gonna see it. It's gonna be up against other machines. Well, like, yeah. I mean, this this week at the BPAC Festival, um, I, I saw that over at uh, BrewDog in Murray because all the machines are lined up in rows and you can't really see the art on them really. So it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So right. that's that's what I'm doing about that. And I'm pretty much done. All I need to do is a little bit of black on the head, and that's job done. You know, knocked it over while all the other machines are over at BBAC being flogged. There you go. All right. I uh, noticed um, there's a trend kind of happening uh, here stateside where uh, people are opening up arcades again, <laughs> like actual arcades, throwback arcades. Oh, like. Just standalone arcades yeah and what they're well the the one that i just watched a video on today uh the it was in pennsylvania they titled it back to the arcade that's the name of the, the <laughs> shop and they put it okay. inside of um <laughs> inside of a dead mall um i don't know uh if you know that term jared but here stateside we have a lot of uh shopping malls that have come on very hard time and there's very few stores actually open in them and so you can imagine that which would make them very cheap yes. to rent. Yes, and so yeah. that's exactly what they did, and uh, uh, kitted this thing out in full '80s arcade glory with the loud carpet and black lights oh, lighting the walls. Um, but the cabinets they had in there were very nice looking. For I mean, it was a mix of pin and uh, video arcade, yeah. but I liked what they're. They weren't going for quantity. That's for sure. Uh, mm. But like they had all four Pac-Man things, you know, so Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, and Pac-Man Plus, and they were all right next to each other. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, so they they were doing that kind of thing where uh, you know just kind of matching up 
different things. And then their pinball selection, they had about eight or nine machines. Um, nothing terribly old. I think the oldest actually was Adam's family, and then they had like you know Big Hurt um, and a, a Dead East Jurassic Park. But then everything else was all modern stern. Um, oh right, okay. But uh, I thought it was that would be good. Yeah, that was that was like oh man, that'd be a fun time to go into there. And then I saw another one where mm-hmm. it was one of these people that has just the insane pinball collection of mm. you know they've just been storing them in a warehouse and decided well let's dust these off and let people play and put them somewhere yeah put them somewhere and theirs is one of those it's you know everything's on free play but you walk in and you pay your flat rate pay your flat rate and then you know go go have a good time um mm. but i think they had something like 700 machines on display just what yeah just insane and they were so pretty it's, much it's a, it's the new pinball hall of fame pretty much pretty much right okay and and it's not Where's like this located I, it was on the east coast somewhere i really don't remember what the location was mm. i think it was actually i should say not east coast probably midwest um like idaho oh, okay. or not idaho but, uh iowa i think mm-hmm. um but it's one of these lucky guys iowa. what's that <laughs> lucky iowa <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's one of these guys who has just obviously lots of disposable income and money to spend on warehouse space. Um, Did he like win the lottery or something? I don't think do so. He's just been apparently been collecting over the years. Um, but the thing is, is he's still collecting. He's still buying the new machines. So wow. he hasn't stopped. <laughs> and he's got the collection that he's putting out to the public. And then he's got his collection that he has just in his basement that is a massive basement that he's fully kitted out and, you know, made into one of those basement arcades. I was just, like, blown away. I'm like, man, why don't these people exist in California? (laughs) Exactly, right? Or here in Brisbane, like, these really massive collections. That they're Um, willing to share with everyone. Well, I mean, we did have that person. They were in... (laughs) <laughs> they were out in banning and they were only able to be open four times a year. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right, because it's silly zoning. That's right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I think you folks can tell by the title. Zen, they... Did Zen really announce it or did you just find it, Jared? I was made aware of it, actually. Okay. My pinball whiz. Okay. Um, that, that this thing exists and it was definitely soft launched <laughs> yeah so uh, over over yeah. on steam all of a sudden jared sends me this link and it's zen pinball m I'm like what? what what do we have here <laughs> yeah. hmm. and uh you know what's that m stand for could it be mature yes it could be so if we go over mm. to um over in steam you can type in yourself. Look for Pinball M. You can wish list it as it's coming soon. Um, you mm. got to believe if it's up there now as a coming soon, that's sometime in 2023. I would, yeah. I would guess. I think so. Yes. I, I, I don't think they'd like have it up there for like months upon months upon end. No. You know? uh, so in their descriptor here, it says, get ready to tilt into terror. The new horror-inspired inspired pinball platform for fearless players. Prove your skills on the most sinister, gory, and badass tables ever brought to life. Sounds good. Sounds about Count me in. Right? So it's interesting that they're <laughs> yeah. leaning into horror. Um, as the selling point. As the selling price. point, yeah. Mm. As opposed to just a catch-all, mature... Uh, thing i mean honestly this made me laugh i'm pr- pretty sure it made you laugh too jared because <laughs> yep. i think we all remember all of you fine <laughs> listeners awesome. and viewers that have watched us over the years the oh so fateful christmas where farsight to die decided to do the 12 days of pinball arcade and on one of those <laughs> announced that they were doing pinball arcade after dark which is a reference yep. to Cinemax. When they used to do Cinemax After Dark on Fridays, that was where they displayed their mature content movies. Um, yeah. And I don't even recall, what was... Why did Pinball Arcade decide that they might need to do that? 
I can't even recall why. It was because of the the it had something to do with like the their rating on the store and the fact that they couldn't put some games into the um pinball arcade and I mean, had to make a separate did, app for it. Was it was it inspired by Elvira and uh, not the Party Monsters, um, Scared Stiff? Scared Stiff, I think it kind of was. They wanted to put the Uncensored ROM into it. Yeah. And they thought, oh, we'll have an After Dark and we can actually make it an Uncensored ROM. And then, of course, um, that led there. us to spin, oh, that means they're going to go after Capcom and we can get Big Bang Bar and they can do, <laughs> you know, yep. they, oh, they've got Stern so they could do Sopranos. Um, and they could do yep. uh, Bally Playboy, um, all these things that might get them into hot water. <laughs> and that, you know, obviously fizzled out to much comic proportions. So, mm. of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so when, when I see this, my first thought was, okay, what the heck are we getting into then with, if you're going horror, does that bring us back to Elvira as a possibility? Um, knowing how Zen was censoring cleavage in FX3. Now, obviously, they're not censoring things in pinball effects, but Elvira is a little bit step beyond <laughs> what's in pinball effects right now. Mm, well, that's right, yeah. It's got, like, you know, it's definitely got low-hanging cleavage. <laughs> I thought you were going to say low-hanging fruit there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was very tempted to, but I was not about to. Um, but no, you know, in the arcade, they had to release like a modesty spider web. That oh, that's right. Zooms. I forgot about <laughs> because that. Because it was like a little bit too racy. Ooh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, they'll be able to do all sorts of stuff in there. They'll be able to have all the, the innuendo laid in, like giving Elvira multiple jackpots, etc. Yeah. You know, the things that we love to do to Elvira in that game. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be fun. Yeah, so... Uh... Some of the things here that it then says, uh, just in terms of uh, mature content description, it says this game may contain content not appropriate for all ages or may not be appropriate for viewing at work, uh, being frequent violence or gore, and general mature content. General mature content. I love content how you covers can actually a play lot. games at work. I love how you can play games at work that they <laughs> suggest that that's even a thing. I want to go to that place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just playing pinball. That's all. That's right. You know. Glory pinball. Avert <laughs> your eyes if you're easily offended. Um, so the one game that uh, we know for sure that's going to be in this, because this is what is uh, listed on there, is Wrath of the Elder Gods Director's Cut. Mm. So you may yeah. be asking, <laughs> what's going to be in the Director's Cut? Yeah, Very good right. question. It's already, it's already pretty, pretty full on that table as a as a as a look yes but clearly they can do a little bit more so let me they can. bring up uh an image or two one second mm. we'll have a little looky looky yeah, we'll at what they might be doing here. all right so there you see it there is the table and at first glance you might be going okay i'm not seeing anything different However, mm. I will direct your eyes down to the desk in the lower left corner, and you notice all those bloody mm. handprints. <laughs> yeah, that looks interesting, doesn't it? Right. Uh, the ramps and the launch lane have a trail of blood. Drag marks right. on all the ramps. Uh, yeah. And then the flippers are nice and glowy. Yeah. Which is just a nice, I guess, quality of life addition. Uh, yeah, yeah. Moving over here. Here you can really see a lot of splatter up on the wall. Um, up around the Ma's mouth. Yeah, true. There's definitely some there, isn't there? Yep. And then going over here, that looks like some eyeballs <laughs> for multi-ball purposes. Uh, yeah, in the, that in the horseshoe lane and the uh, the two uh, loops. Yeah. So I'm that curious to know, too. like, do the eyeballs pop out of the beast or do they just magically appear? I don't know. I've not gotten far in this game, so I don't know at what point ball capture is there. Uh, I've been to the wizard mode on it. Okay. And the, the balls just come out, basically. Okay. They don't come out of the eye sockets at okay. the moment. But I mean, that seems like the logical choice here. That'd be fun if the eyes just like, popped out. Yeah, <laughs> they should go pop, 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 pop out of the beast and off they go rolling around. That would be really cool as right. an effect. Yeah. Um, 
and then just notice in the top right of the play field how they've got that little extra bit of red blood um in the the top right of the play field just below the window where the thing comes out and grabs your yeah, ball right there yeah. yeah so that where the tentacle comes out and that looks like that tentacle looks even a little bit more menacing like it's got a big red sort of backlight to mm -hmm. it and it's got mm -hmm. shadow and stuff like that so it looks it looks definitely better and i think if you have a look at the more it looks more meaty as well um like it looks a little bit more fleshy in inside the um more spin disc thing uh -huh. mm. okay and for for reference sake this is what it the current version of the game looks like so clean no blood trails, no blood no splatters um but I do wonder if they're going to uh, do anything like, are there going to be different call-outs that they're adding into this? Um, no, I hope so. Well, I hope they rethink the everything about it, like make the music far less jovial. Oh my God, um, change the music, please. Please, 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 and, please, and please make change it, the music. <laughs> I would rebuy it if the music was different for sure. Absolutely rebuy it. Um because that music is infuriating. It's yeah. just the wrong fit for the table. It absolutely and call outs, it would be nice to to look at call outs again. Um and maybe make some I mean, it's a funny mix with the call outs. They sort of a little bit jovial. Like some of them are a little bit sort of lighthearted. Yeah. And I just don't think that that's right for this table. It needs to be like you know, fighting for your life sort of call outs because this is this theme is like, you know, these creatures are here and they're trying to get you sort of thing. It's just makes the table, that doesn't fit really, I don't think in my opinion. I'm curious too, do we think, is this just going to be a free table for Pinball M? Well, I don't, yes, I think there probably will be a free table because I don't think people are going to start buying it again just I don't to either. get the, the gory inclusions. This, this will be your Fishtails, your Sorcerer's Lair, um, you know, Wild West, basically. Yeah, because this is this is going to be a whole new long. platform, uh, by the looks yeah. of it. Um, and Separate I... app, other things as well. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be like it's got a different listing on Steam. That means it's going to be a different app that you'll need to launch. I think. So, we're going to get into uh, our speculation of what we think about the reasons for that too. But I'm going to show you one other thing mm -hmm. here. Uh, and that is this. That's a very different looking um, theme yeah. to the pin room, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting here is that this, this particular room seems themed especially for Wrath of the Elder Gods in yes. the period, time period that it's actually made in. So... I wonder what will happen if more games get added to this. Are they going to have because it almost looks like a corner, yeah. like a corner of a like a an alley or something like that. So I wonder if you switch between the the tables, if the each one is going to have their own sort of corner that they live in. That'd certainly be interesting, um, especially yeah. so it says uh, up there at the top game mode. So we've got their classic game modes there, classic challenges which I assume would be the same challenges that exist for Wrath of the Elder Gods in Pin FX. And then you got the Pinball M challenges, uh, which is kind of interesting. I wonder what that might entail. Yeah. Look at what is up the top of the table. Yes. So the, the table's highlight, Leagues. Mm -hmm. Leagues is interesting. Now, we, we have heard rumor uh, ages ago when they were releasing, I think it was in Early Access, they were looking at doing Leagues. Yes. Um a long, long time ago. And this might be where they're actually, you know, using this platform to do a bit of testing on leagues before they roll it into the main platform. Because we do know Zen has a history of experimenting in the wild with this sort of thing. Right. So perhaps this is almost like, if you think about like an alpha channel for Pimble M, where, the, uh, where Pimble FX, sorry, where they can test out some ideas and have it separate from the, the main product. Um, so yeah, Lee's is an interesting addition. Yeah. Uh, what else do we see here? We have uh, campaign, 
which again, mm -hmm. why do we need a campaign? Campaign's different. Don't know. That's different. Uh, and then play corner settings. Now, so this flows into the whole idea of having a corner, doesn't right. it? I didn't even see that when I was making those comments before. Yeah, and yeah, you're right. Play corner is interesting. It is. Uh, like, and then just does that let you adjust? Does it let you adjust the sort of um, the environment a little bit in there? Well, like, again, I'm imagining if you earn trophies of any sort, or maybe there's special trophies that you would earn for this mm -hmm. that you can maybe. put. I mean, there are some nooks and crannies there that maybe they mm. would uh, be able to exist on um, maybe then you have table settings which oh please i'm hoping might we finally get a lighting <laughs> setting because mm. or is it merely a setting between being able to play the regular version of wrath of the elder gods and the director's cut version um well, maybe it seems weird but that they might have an choose. entire separate setting or maybe it is a uh, customization of the content um you know maybe you don't like no, to see maybe, blood maybe you don't want to hear a language maybe you know it possible yeah i think it, it'll be a fair a reasonable thing to you know it like for example if you wanted your kids to experience this yeah and you, you said okay well let's it's right in but i'm happy if you play it if we turn off the language for mm -hmm. example I think that's probably a a way that you could, you know, at parent discretion, obviously, but you could, you know, get your kids involved in this platform as well safely. Yeah. Uh, so that would be an interesting, uh, interesting configuration to add. Uh, table, guide, table, that's masteries. Self, yeah, table guide, self-explanatory, and then, yeah, table masteries. Um, isn't... Which is different to challenges, which is interesting. Okay. <laughs> that's... Oh, not that one. Let's go to this button. Hey, there I am. Um, yeah. Hello. <laughs> That's what happens when you use your fingers without looking at the keyboard. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Masteries currently, isn't that just, uh, you know, hitting wizard mode and getting the the one extra item in pin effects? I don't... Uh, I don't know what that's going to be. There's lots of There's lots of extra menus that we don't know anything yeah. about. So there's there's some interesting stuff floating around just in that picture alone. Yeah. Um that's worth that's worth some further investigation at least. What the heck is Vault? Vault. At Where the top there, vault? next to tournaments, says Vault. Vault. Yeah. <laughs> vault. I don't know. Don't either. What vault would be. No. That's, yeah, I don't have any clue what Vault could be. Uh, hmm. So it really is interesting if they're using this <laughs> as, like you said, a, uh, a testing ground. Because <clears throat> what's odd about this whole thing, Mel was very adamant about the fact that PinFX is the platform. The core platform. The core platform. Yeah, the core platform. Now, Everything goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what's this? Right. <laughs> well, right. What's going on here? I can see yeah. now I can see it from one particular angle here. Mm. Uh for the consoles, they need a separation of uh content uh ratings, right? Right. Uh they've never allowed you to buy a core game and then buy mature DLC. Oh, right, okay. Which is well, weird. I've always case, thought it was weird because I'm sense. like, hey, if I'm able to buy it, isn't that by agreement, by tacit agreement, saying that I'm cool with it? I'm allowed. That I'm allowed. Yeah. But maybe that does screw up the ratings, or maybe it's a case of, you know, <laughs> Hasbro going, uh, we really don't want trolls right next to a gory game. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, who knows why? Uh, but, but I suspect that when it comes to Steam, that's not an issue. And so no. I wonder if at some point that the two could be combined, whether it be reverse, like let's say mm -hmm. it's, well, if you own Pinball M, you'll have access to all of your content that you owned in PinFX, and you can just use Pin 
Pinball M as your platform. Launcher. Launcher. So you buy it in Pinball M essentially and then play it in Pinball Effect. So Pinball M becomes like a entitlement right. sort of thing. Or is it, and I'm thinking with Star Wars VR, we have that whole room that we were able to be in. And yeah. we've commented about how the, the pin cave where the pinball machine actually is, isn't different at all than what's in Star Wars for the most part. No. But if you shifted your view over to the left, there was like a seating area and a big TV. So it was like a whole nother room, right? Yeah. And it would be interesting if... For zone. Yeah. Right. So if you thought of of this being on a platter and there's this one corner that is, and then the whole platter just goes... And then boom, in comes your next zone, which is Pinball M. Yeah. I don't know. That's they could definitely do it like that. Be interesting, like a big, ro like a rotisserie. Yeah, yeah. So a, the, a lazy season of pinball, if you will. Right. So that the titles that are <laughs> pinball M exclusive would still stay pinball M exclusive. They wouldn't be selectable right next to your uh, Snoopy pinball, right? Um, yeah. But they would be. You have to go to a new tab that yes. says pinball M. And then example. I'm thinking that tab could actually be parental locked. So yeah, you know, it'd be like, no, sorry, you don't have access to this move along you know uh, mm -hmm. again, yeah spitballing because we haven't been able to do spitballing in a while so why not <laughs> um, no we haven't this is the first time we've been able to do pure speculation because we really don't know a great deal about this ever. yeah uh so obviously it got my wheels turning again uh, the first thing that popped into my mind literally was elvira um does that mean we're yeah. finally going to get elvira in here because this would be the perfect home for it without having to worry yeah. about any of the nonsense. And it's still a horror-themed uh, table, obviously. So it fits the bill, basically. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the, uh, what else does it say here? It says, uh, a library of brand new, never-before-seen tables filled with fear and carnage. So it sounds to me like we're getting a whole bunch of news and originals from a whole bunch of probably new licensed properties that i mean <laughs> yeah which you know they may not have been able to um put these things into the main app which is why this needed to be invented like, yeah this needed to be stood up and potentially the reason why it was self-launched this is my my speculation here is that we know that in um epic games early access while it was released to us as users to do testing, it was absolutely released to get more licenses to sign up to the platform. Yes. It was like a an, an early, like, hey, look at our new platform on Unreal 4. Would you like to come and sign up and give us some some dollary dues? Mm -hmm. So it was, an, it was absolutely an onboarding platform just as much as it was a let's work out the bugs in lieu of getting Switch released, which, you know, probably would have, you know, they would have needed that performance data um, on uh, Epic Games to inform them of how to actually tune the Switch release, which I, I guarantee you they were working on in tandem um, with uh, with the release on Epic Games because they knew they had a real a real beast to tame there. So it's pretty reasonable to assume that soft launching now was to show licensors, potential licensors that, hey, we got a platform for you. Come and join us, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we had to think about just Zen's catalog that they currently have, um, mm. regardless of what the new IP might be, uh, mm. but obviously World War Z would fit right at home in here and could use the director's cut version. Um, yeah, so would Doom. Doom, Doom would be far Absolutely. Off. Doom Aliens. would be a big stretch to just add more blood. Yeah, exactly. Alien Aliens versus Pinball. Work. Bam. Yeah. Um, my God. Predator. <laughs> AVP. Mm -hmm. um, that would be wonderful if you got rid of the stupid voices. Um, yeah, get rid of the cheese. But Aliens, add in a couple of the uh, the more choice lines that you didn't weren't able to put in there <laughs> dialogue-wise. Mm -hmm. um, that would yep. be good. Um, I'm trying to think what else is uh, do they have that's... They really don't have that. Well, Walking Dead. If they got Walking Dead back. Be the yeah, perfect home for it. That, that would be good. And they could really amp up the blood mm -hmm. on that one. Because it's a bit light on at the moment in that one. Yeah. 
Um, if we were to think new IP, new horror, or, well, it doesn't have to be new horror. It could be classic horror. Well, what about, like... Uh... I mean, there's where it's like, you know, do you get a Friday the 13th table? <laughs> you know, they've been working with Paramount. Um, That's right. I mean, they really yeah. oh, I was just, I mean, think about it. Your flippers and machetes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or even like something more like contemporary, like Scream, right. for example. Yeah. You know, they could really do stuff with Scream as a franchise. You God, know? you know what I would love to see? <laughs> and I'm just... Think theater of magic, right? With the mm. rotating cube. Except yeah. for the cube is the Hellraiser cube. <laughs> and mm. it just launches out hooks and starts peeling back the table. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, if you want horror, that's like just, the ultimate horror. I'm just it? saying, that would be pretty that'd be pretty choice. And it's I mean, when the theater of magic cube turns into the magnet, in a lot of respects it does look like the Lamont configuration cube. But That'd be fun. Mm. <laughs> that, yes. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So, I mean, there's already, like, there's the stuff that we haven't notably seen come back to Pinball FX as a core platform yet. Like, yeah. All those ones like Alien, Doom, um, they're dead. probably going to end up in there mm -hmm. as attractors you know, into the platform. Um, and they will get extra stuff in them for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, mate. Probably you know, lots more gore. Perhaps they might look at callouts. Um, hopefully, but yeah, there's plenty of stuff that they can already put in there right now. It seems like it would also, uh, obviously, if it starts out horror, but if they instead embrace the M theme, uh, it would allow for things like not that it needs it, but put Xenon in here. Uh, just because I know a lot of people really don't appreciate the voice call outs or the voice in that. Um, a little too sexualized. Uh, oh, okay. I wouldn't even have picked that in this day and age. You wouldn't, but um, that was... I, I remember when that came out in Pinball Arcade and um, the Digital Pinball Fans Forum, there were some people that were just like, I'm not buying that table because it's too dirty too to me. Too sexy for me. Too sexy for me. Too sexy. Um, <laughs> And if you think about some of the early 80s, late 70s artwork on some of the ballet machines. Um, oh, it's all like women with big boobs. Let's, let's exactly. be serious. Like, exactly. So, like, case in point, all my Gottlieb tables, you know. The, right. Uh, even the, the, the Force 2 aliens, well, you know, they have a particular shape to them. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a close look at it, which you can't unsee after you've seen it. Right. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just think of like Future Spa. Have oh, you seen the back of Future with, Spa? Fu <laughs> it's like... Future Spa with uh with jacked uh Stanley and knockoff Bo Derek. <laughs> yeah. And the like the dude in the spa bath is the concerning part of <laughs> Future Spa for me. You look at the back glass next time you see it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... like that guy's having a good time in the spa. <laughs> <laughs> we have this uh messaging group. It's called um uh, sexy pinball machines. Okay. And we all we're doing is we're taking photographs of all the risque stuff on mm -hmm. back glasses and mm -hmm. play fields. And Future Spa gets a fair bit of air time oh, in yeah. there. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, stuff like that. I mean, Future Spa, that's the only part of the game that's risque. Yeah. Everything else is, like, it's just, it's an early 80s table. There's no call-outs or anything. No. So if art is a factor in there, then maybe. I hope not, though. Yeah, um, but then it would also open up the door. And look, if we're thinking horror, and if we're thinking conversation that uh, Zen themselves broadcast was spooky, we keep well, on throwing this I mean, rumor that's... that, I mean, there's a possibility of them doing something together. And my God, if you open up the horror thing, well, and partnered with spooky. Most of the tables are horror themed. Yeah. Like just, you know, Halloween is, is a good example. Yep. You got um, Rob Zombie. You've got um, Alice Cooper, right? Alice Cooper. So, yeah, they, they've got a fairly, that's their stock in trade, really, because um, they're, they're massive horror fans, you know? Um, so, it, I mean, again, you could you could put a, a, you know, a spooky pinball corner in Pinball M. 
quite happily, you know. It's and, like it's just it's just branching trees of everything that's going on in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, yeah, it, it, it it certainly opens up that door um, because I think at least stateside here, people are much more comfortable with violence than they are with uh, sex. So, all right, interesting. It, the, oh yeah, <laughs> I know you're you're on the side of the world, Jared, that doesn't care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our plot, Bring it on. Bring on the sex and things. Our plot of land, right. people lose their minds over it. Um, it it's, it's, it's the whole thing of a PG-13 movie can show just the most horrific of violence and people getting mowed down by gun, but God forbid if there's a nipple. Um, yeah, if there's a nipple, it's like, ooh! Yeah. All uh, the prudes come out. So yeah. it would be an interesting, again, test market to see what's the appetite for mature content and then from mm. there be able to expand out um to those it's, it's a it's a market test yeah i mean it there's really not... is this, this thing is a massive market test is what it is yeah um for sure um and you know that's smart to keep it away from the main platform and do this testing i just it's probably time for us to work out to discuss the next part of this which is literally what the forum is talking about all the time and that is how do you do cross buy on this like why where will the entitlements go where can you play it um how will they how will they manage this on all the different platforms they now support like this is a really big unanswered question and mel did officially come into the pinball effects discord and comment about it after being you know after blowing up going hey what is this and why is there being no announcement um, you know, they're preparing something right now to talk about it and announce it more widely and publicly. And so you would expect the next pinball, um, bites show to cover what this is, what they're going to do with it, potentially even give us a, like a, a launch date for this thing. So I think based on the fact that they've soft launched it and they've got that initial community feedback, they know exactly what questions they need to answer now as well, which yeah. is again, you might think this was like, oh, this is a bit weird. They did this. No, it was totally intentional. Like they wanted to get market research about what problems people think they'd have with the platform so they can address it and validate probably what they've been talking about in the studio for, I'd probably say months now, oh, yeah. um, when they've been developing this and working out partnerships and stuff. So this is the pointy end of it where they can actually start, you know, getting some real feedback from us about it. So yeah, I, next pinball bites is going to be an interesting one for sure. I mean, this wouldn't be the first time that Zen has done something where they said, "Buy it here, and it'll be unlocked there." Mm. Where um, was the other? Because they, they did that. They, they did that, that with uh, with Marvel. If you uh, purchased yeah. the Marvel table in Marvel Pinball, this was back in Zen uh, uh, Zen Two FX Two and FX Two yeah. days. Yes, yeah. Um, it so they had. They had FX2 and Zen 2 Pinball, but then they also came out with Star Wars Pinball and they came out with Marvel Pinball. Marvel and pinball. for both of those, yeah. if you purchase the table within the Star Wars Pinball app or the Marvel Pinball app, it unlocked in FX2 or Zen Pinball right. 2. But if you so purchased it in those two, it did not unlock in uh, Marvel or Star the Wars. The other apps. Yeah. Right. So you needed to buy them in the bespoke app for yes. them to unlock in the core app. Yeah. Yeah, that's... And, you know, tactically, that was a smart decision because, again, those apps were experiments in the wild. Like, they were trying out new things in those apps, right, from memory. Well, it was things. not just trying out. It was that the licenses wanted a spotlight on their product. Uh, yes, that's the main They reason. didn't want to share. <laughs> mm. They wanted uh, what you call a branded experience. Yes. Uh, for their product. Yes. Which is exactly why Star Wars VR is it. Like, because, again, well, you know, that's another example of experimentation in the wild. That was the first Unreal 4 platform apart from Zen Pinball. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, again, but like the, the benchmarking on Unreal 4 happened way before Pinball FX early access happening. Like, so, yeah. Um, really, the the experimentation with the Unreal Four has been happening now for like two or three years, I think. Yeah. Um, 
maybe probably more like two. Um, but yeah, like it's been out there for sure. So let's uh, spin this conversation away from Pinball M and then over mm. into uh, that very subject there, VR, which we have heard mm. zip about. Um, mm. Meanwhile, the VR landscape is changing once again uh, with... So, for... <laughs> okay, so you had that Apple headset get announced at, what was it, $3,500? Yeah, not so affordable. Right. Um and truth be told, it's not meant for gaming. <laughs> it's meant for <laughs> everything else, but... Um... It's meant, it's designed to use a very high-resolution monitor to replace your big Apple screen yeah. that you have, or an alternative to it. Um, um, but then it was just announced this week that Meta is canceling development on uh, Pro. Pro 2 and mm. is pretty much going to phase out the pro right now in favor of the meta three, the meta quest three. Yes, correct. So that landscape is changing still. Um, I think they're realizing now all these VR companies are realizing it's still pretty niche. It's like very it's, niche. And yeah, that's, it's, there's not enough, there's not enough people to support multiple variants of headsets. And they they clearly demonstrated that there's not a demand for high end in this market. Like people want, no, I want an affordable consumer grade product that like the Quest 2 probably starts out a little bit performance um, capped. And then they start unlocking performance capabilities of the platform as they've got data on it. Because you've seen that with Quest 2. Like they go, oh yeah, you've now got 120 hertz. You've now got extra gpu power because we, we know the thing's not going to catch on fire you know so they're unlocking capabilities of the headset over time which breathes new life into it so this is the pattern now and they're going to do that with uh the metaquest 3 for sure and it's going to have um the pancake lenses that the pro had on it it's going to be basically the pro um but at a more consumer friendly price i just wonder though is Zen going to? I know they've said that they're still going to do VR, but mm. they recognize this niche. Uh, they didn't add more tables to Star Wars. Um, no, it's I mean, which is kind of why I sat on the fence on purchasing uh, a new headset because I'm just like, unless mm. I see Zen going full commitment, because that's the only thing I'm going to use it for. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. Um, unless I see them go full commitment, I'm not. I'm not going to waste my, my money buying it and then being frustrated that Zen's not doing anything. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that it's probably way back on their back burner of what needs to be done. I think obviously Switch was their first thing, and I'm sure they're still trying to optimize that thing. Um, I think Cabinet is next for what their concerns are. Uh, yeah. Possibly switching over to Unreal 5. <laughs> And not yet, but I don't think we're going to see Unreal 5 for at least one to two years. Right. Uh, they've still got a lot of performance to squeeze out of four, I think, okay. before they have to do a, um, like an upgrade to five. So I just I just have a feeling that the VR, and, and especially with the Quest 3, uh, that's what they would have to wind up scaling everything to, or what they would want to scale everything to, uh, as far as that yeah. is concerned. So um, I just think it's a ways off. Which is, it's unfortunate. I think it'll be, it'll be Quest Three Primary, Quest Two Secondary, yeah, and that will be the lowest they go, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it will be interesting to see if they offer a native experience on VR. I, my gut says no, they won't. Uh, it will be AirLink or wide connection only to your computer, because it's just. We saw it with, with uh, Star Wars VR. The experience on native Quest 2 is nowhere near as good as it is on PC. Yeah. So if I was to play VR and Star Wars VR, it would be through the, the PC connected wirelessly or through AirLink. It's just a better experience. Um, I also mention the cabinet because, as somebody pointed out, it might have been Retro Ralph that pointed it out. Um, he's like, one up is dying. <laughs> um, 
And <clears throat> somebody else pointed out that on One Up's announcements or whatever, there is zero mention for pinball at all. Yeah. Um, I don't think One Up has got the Guernsey for if if Zen are looking at doing cabinets, it won't be it won't be One Up. Uh, meanwhile, the same thing over at uh, At Games. They have not done a single thing with their cabinet uh, no. in terms of upgrades. So, are, I don't know. Is the, Who's going to do is, this? Is the cabinet done? <laughs> or, uh, I mean, is is Zen going to go entirely the DIY route and be like, no, you know what? Build, we, we built our own. Builds our own. We're figuring out the specs. You all go build your own. <laughs> we'll help you out in terms of uh, what you maybe need to build install uh but mm -hmm. maybe they see that most people are more interested in just installing a pc and running the game than having a video card built in to do things yeah like an actual platform built in as a as a turn on solution well there's always the problem is there's always a um they're always built to a price and that price is always low to make them attractive to people to buy like with, i've still i actually saw one arcade one up Star Wars machine here at Costco, Aussie dollars, one thousand dollars. There's no way I would spend that money on that thing now. Yeah, like, it's no way. It's not worth that. It's worth hmm, at at a maximum eight hundred Australian dollars, and that would be the most I would pay for the thing. Um, it's just it's not a capable platform anymore. Just, hmm. I mean, I really do hope that Sen has something up their sleeves um, because people don't like, there's some people out there that just won't build a cabinet because it's, it's, and that's just not I know that I won't, I know that I won't. No. And I wouldn't either, even though I'm like, I could probably do it. It's just, I just don't have the time. And to do honestly, it. it's less about the actual building of the cabinet because you know, my friend that helped me build the pin sim, he could easily build a cabinet for me. That's, well, that's just not buy flat pack cabinets now. You, for you me, can go and buy a kit. That yeah. will give you a pinball machine cabinet for digital pinball now. Yeah. For me, it's the the software. Um, no, I'm getting that the, the front end. Yeah. Getting the front end to work and go through everything um, without it being a hassle because every single time Zen releases a table, is it going to be a hassle uh, to then try mm. and install and purchase and get that going and stuff like that? So I would love it if, because I'm, again, I'm not concerned with having. Uh, VP10 uh, and playing those, I would be perfectly fine with whatever Zen's offerings are. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Once you hit the, <laughs> once you've got as many tables as we have in Zen, I'm not really hurting for anything. Um, mm. Yeah. And so long as they're keep on producing tables, then I'm cool. Um, yeah. If Zen was, so Zen's, if Zen if was Zen tapering down, line, then that'd be another thing, but. That's right. But, I think if if Zen's going to the cabinet space, if they can make the onboarding process as easy as possible for people, yeah, um, like so, like pick the major um, pinball front end, like um, yeah, pinup pop or something like that, um, and make it work one hundred percent with that um, and easily with that. I think that's the way for them to go. Um, team up with the community because the community is strong in in um, that space, that cabinet space. I mean, you already see it. Like we've got that DMD integration now yeah. um, from community folks. So, you know, this is an indication that's the way they're going. They're actually looking at better integration with, with community-led projects and open source projects that are in the community now. So the other thing the is, right if, direction, I think. If they put out their own cabinet, obviously, because you're building to scale uh, and you're mm. buying in mass in bulk, they're going to be able to get a lot of the parts, the monitors, the, the pinball legs themselves for way cheaper than a DIYer would. Um, I mean, again, I discovered yeah. that pinball legs ain't cheap. <laughs> and, and yeah. And you're talking domestically in the U S yeah. try exporting Gottlieb legs to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in other words, don't, unless you're doing a container of them. No. Um, so expensive. And I'm then, actually on the... Anyhow, keep going. No, I was just gonna, and then trying to wire up all the uh, the actuators and, the, you know, the solenoids and, uh, you know, all that jazz. You're doing it nicely. Yeah. I'm actually doing it neatly. 
Like it, it, I know if you did it, it would be a a, a rat's nest of cables <laughs> beneath the play field, right? It'd be like, oh, where, what's the shortest length of wire I can use to connect this to that? <laughs> I don't want to have like nice cable bundles and stuff. No. Yeah. So I that's why I'm like I really do I see the advantages. Um, again, online people were like, nobody wants to spend that much. If they're gonna spend that much, they're just gonna go full tilt. And I'm like, no, there's always. There's the people that don't want to tinker. There's the people that do want to tinker. And the people that don't mm -hmm. want to tinker just want a good, solid product. Um, and yeah. honestly, the the problem that happened with Arcade 1-Ups was these things that were supposed to be in the store weren't. Um, yeah. They just never appeared on shelves. And then it became an online-only experience, and it became a waiting list experience, and then they raised the prices and you know screwed Zen over in that manner. And I'm sure it, that got Zen in trouble. Well, not in trouble, but had their license holders be like, hey, that ain't what you promised, which is why I think we never saw the Jurassic Park pinball that was heavily rumored to be the next uh, release from 1UP. Yep. Um, I, I just... I, I think that you need a product that is... You can go to the store and pick it up. And assemble it. Yeah, you, you don't have to worry about shipping. You don't have to worry about the box being damaged when you get it, you know, delivered to you. Um, all and those. To the credit, Arcade One Up, they they got that right with the way they ship products and they put them into stores. I mean, we we saw cabinets on the floor at Costco here in Australia, albeit years after they came to America, but that's what we expect now. Um, but they were there on the floor, and you could just pick one up, put it on your trolley, take it home, set it up. Like yeah. that is. That is what you want. You want the IKEA of pinball, yeah, right. Hmm. And like, if you know, it's all you need. It's like you know, on the box, just add computer, and that's all you need, right? <sighs> um, imagine that. And then Even... if Zen had, if if Zen offered you know, using, like, with an agreement, properly licensed, respectful of the community, the the digital pinball community out there, a, a licensed version of the the like say pinup popper or something that was directly integrated with as part of the um the pinball effects uh cabinet experience that's i mean that solves a lot of problems that makes the community happy they're not misappropriating software um everyone's getting acknowledged and compensated and all those things and then that experience becomes a lot less troublesome for just you know, average person wanting to make a digital cabinet or even just use two screens and set it up without any box and just use two screens in a, and just a hand controller to get that cabinet-like experience. No, that's not a cabinet-like experience. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's what some people can afford. Well, I and, know it's what, you know, well, but when I talk cabinet, because, I mean, that's essentially what I can do here. You know, I can rotate my screen um, mm. and some I lean it and I can bring in my pin sim and plug it in, it still is not a cabinet feel. It, I, I mm. want... A big solid box. I want a big solid box in front of me, laying out the way that it should be. I want the nudge to feel legit how I do it. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's all about that presentation of right what's right there in front of you. Um, yeah, right, okay. So you want the, 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 big, the big honking box in your lounge room you can just yes. turn up. Yes. Rock up to and start playing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, I, that it's flick the power switch and within 30 seconds, it's good to go. Um, yeah. That I'm not having to deal with windows and updates and, uh, you know, turning this on and making sure the, you know, this, this, and this are all set and functioning and, and all that. No, I want it mm -hmm. to be a simple boom, flip the switch. I'm ready to play. It's in a track mode. Come play me. Right. Um, well, it'll be interesting. Let's see, so, they, let's see what they settle on. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is in flight. We're, we're, we're mid-July. Um, well, almost to the end of July now. Uh, it's quite unbelievable. Most of your... first year is flying by. Right. Uh, yeah. We always point out that most of the holiday announcement kind of things, which are your big ticket items, get announced mm. in September, early October. So if there's anything on the cabinet front, I imagine it's going to be popping up there. I imagine that we're going to be hearing about Pinball M in late August, August. early September. Yeah. Seems to yeah, make sense. Because we already had a Pinball Bites this month, technically, haven't we? Right? Yes, I believe so. Yes. 
So it'd be, I mean, they didn't say that there is no schedule for pinball fights. They just no. announced things when they announced it. So it could be anywhere between now and mid August, really. Um, it all depends when they want to shout out about it, really. Right. Which, and then yeah, there would be a question of how much more they announced for Switch. Well, that's an ongoing thing, isn't it? Like they're just going to be releasing stuff as they've optimized and keep on going. That's, that, I mean, really, that's probably the reason why I'm not going to see Unreal 5 until yeah, Switch true. actually upgrades their console. That's true. Um, to Switch 2, that's when you can expect Unreal 5 to start being considered, I think. Yeah. And of course, we, we, we still don't have all the tables from FX3 inside of Pinball <laughs> FX. So, not yet. Um, that's another factor where I feel like once that has happened, then the ball is just like, now they're on the, the, the bullet train. <laughs> yeah. They're on equal pegging now and yeah. they can, they can go and do all the other stuff they need to do. So be mm -hmm. interesting to see what transpires, what goes down. But, uh, I said pinball M there's a lot to answer. Um, you, you can better mm -hmm. believe we've already put out our feelers to Mel. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're trying to get him on to tell us more, um, so we'll see what uh, comes of, of that. Also, so we appreciate though everybody tuning in, watching uh, this show, uh, giving us your feedback. Please, again, if you have comments for anything that you want us to address or feature on a show, do for a new thing. Um, that's how the poll came about last time. Uh, we would love to do exactly that. So. Don't hesitate to pop onto the socials and uh, communicate with us in that manner. Um, Jared right. tends to be the one that uh, responds on Discord. I tend to be the one that responds on Twitter. And both of us take cracks at uh, YouTube. <laughs> um, usually, yeah, I'm usually just putting my name in and into the comment yeah. that I respond to. Um, also, the streaming will <laughs> the streaming will continue until morale improves. That'll be coming back <laughs> uh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I've been, you know, winning tournaments this week um, uh, at BPAC. So I've been, yeah, busy during the evenings. Uh, well, not winning tournaments, getting podium finishes, but that's winning to me. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, so and we get, you know, being in the same breathing atmosphere as Steve Bowden. So that's quite nice. Um, uh, so, yeah, that'll be happening again this week. And I've got some episodes to cut up and upload to YouTube so that that content will keep on coming. Um, so yeah, uh, get, come and catch up with me on stream and you can chat about things you want to, uh, uh, talk about, you want us to talk about on the show as well. I always like it. I definitely prefer people to come on the stream and, and harangue me while I'm playing. That's why I do it. I want to talk to you all. So come along and say good day whenever you see the, bro the broadcast announcement come up in, um, discord and, uh, join our black a discord for, for more information. It's pretty low traffic. There you go. So. That's all the news that uh, we have this time. Of course, next time, it's everything that Jared loves to talk about. We all love stuff and things. Till then, folks. Bye-bye. See you later.